Hello everyone, this is another Physics 30 example question. Uh, this time we're in Unit 3, which is Electromagnetism, and this is Lesson 1. Here we are doing uh, some recap of our graphing skills. And this is just one example here. We're going to look at a, how we get a, a, a straight line. We're going to analyze that straight line and then use it to get a value. Should be a review for us, uh, but here we go. Okay, so first of all, here's our graph. Um, there's some data points on this graph and it looks a lot like it's linear um, there's only one thing to remark on and that is of course that this data point here looks like it's an outlier so I'm going to call it out I'm going to circle it uh, this is an outlier and that means I'm not going to use it I'm going to completely ignore it something obviously went wrong with that data point uh, at a later stage I might go back and look at what might have happened but for now I'm just going to ignore it Next thing to do then is to put a line of best fit through these dots, of course, ignoring the outlier. So what I need to do is use a straight edge, preferably a ruler. I'm going to run that ruler through uh, what looks to be, according to my eye, looks to be halfway between all of these dots. So if I was to put a ruler through and then draw a line, I'm thinking it would be somewhere in here. Now, please note that this line may or may not touch any of the dots. It doesn't actually have to. It just has to look um, like it's going through the middle of all of them. So it may not touch any of the dots, um, but it's going to go through all of them. Something like that. Okay, so once I've got my line, the next thing is to figure out how to get some data from it. So this is, I find this is a, a bit that's done quite quite badly overall, so it's worth just spending a moment just focusing on it. The key here is to recognize that the slope is going to come from the line. The slope is not coming from the data points. So once we're analyzing a line of best fit, we are ignoring the data tables completely. The table of information where I got these dots from, I do not want to be using that table now to do a, a, a slope calculation. And for some reason, a lot of people feel the need to look back at their table to get their data. You don't want to do that because you may accidentally pick this data point and then this data point. And that's going to give you a very different slope. This is the purpose of doing the line of best fit. This line of best fit, this red line, sort of averages out all of the little experimental error that's been uh, going on with each data point, all of that noise, the ups and the downs between these different data points, that gets averaged out. So what we want to do is find two parts on this red line that are going to be easy then to read off. So in other words, I want to find some parts of this red line that are close to uh, some intersecting crosshairs on the grid. So I, I think I could probably get away with this dot here. That looks like it's close to an intersecting cross. And then down at this end, I'm going to go to here. Now, notice that I've tried to pick da the data points from either end of the line. So I'm picking it from either here and here. I, I want to try and stay away from the middle of the line because if I start picking my data points in the middle, then any tiny error is going to really be exaggerated by the fact that they're close together. So spread those data points out and then and then we can go ahead and analyze. Okay, so the next thing to do is to draw lines horizontally and vertically from these uh, from my selected points. So I'm going to take this this line down here and come all the way across to there. Okay, and then I'm going to take this data point up here and slide it all the way along there. I'm going to do the same now with the vertical. So like I'm using my ruler here. Um, let's use green. I'm going to come down from here all the way down. And then same over here to give me these lines. Now, uh, I'm going to write these values on here and then we'll do our analysis. So this value here looks like 62, 4, 6, 8. So this is 68. And this one here looks like 14. And then on the y-axis, I've got 12 and 2. Okay, so really a slope is just uh, looking at the change in the y-axis over the change in the x-axis. So we would say 
delta y over delta x. And so that's going to be my y2 minus y1. You're probably familiar with this little formula over x2 minus x1. Well, what are those values? Well, this is going to be my y2. It's my, my biggest y value. And this is my y1. And this is going to be my x2 and my x1. So what does that give me for a slope? Well, it's going to give me, let's use colors here to match. It's going to be 12 minus 2. Now, I've got to be careful. Please don't forget this. Another common mistake. Don't forget the exponent on this one. So this is going to be times 10 to the 2. And I'm going to keep my units in here. Joules. Over. Now I've got my 68. I'll put it in brackets as well. 68 minus 14. And there's no exponents on this one. Just kilograms. Okay. So I'm getting a value there if I put that into my calculator of 18 decimal five eight lots of decimal places and this is in joules per kilogram. Okay, now we get to the fun part. We have our slope value and now we need to use that slope to do something. We need to use it to analyze. Now the first thing to do is notice that there's a the reason why we we put things in a straight line is because we can extrapolate up and down, um, but also because we know the mathematical shape. Oops. We know that a straight line mathematically can be written as y is equal to mx, and if there was an intercept, we would also say plus b. So hopefully you're familiar with that. So the key to using uh, graphical analysis and slopes with a, a physics concept is really making this connection. It's making the connection between this statement of about the straight line and a connection between a physics principle. So we're trying to figure out the speed. So let's just highlight that. We, we want to know the speed of the object and we have the kinetic energy of the object. So hopefully you can see that this is going to be using a formula that we should know about. It's, you, you guessed it, it's the kinetic energy formula. So this is going to be um, my, oops, don't want to do that. This is going to be my EK, my kinetic energy, is equal to one half mv squared. So this is the skill that's recognizing, hey, we have this straight line formula. We have this y is equal to mx plus b. And we have a physics principle that we know to be true, as far as we can tell. And now it's a case of mapping, or in other words, overlaying this formula to the mathematical model that we have. Okay, Because we, we have a value, a, an experimental value that's come from this mathematical shape that can be linked back to the physics principle. So let's have a go at doing this. Um, we're going to say, okay, we're going to say that uh, well, the, the, the y, we're going to try and find the y component in this experiment, in this experimental data, and we're going to try and find the mx bit. We'll think about the plus b, but as you'll see, that doesn't actually exist in this particular um, uh, physics principle, and in, in theory, if this was interpolated all the way down, you'd probably get a zero, 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 even though it's maybe not obvious for my straight line here. Anyway, let's go ahead and try and figure this out. Um, our y axis is ek. So that's kind of useful because it's already giving us the, so I'm going to put this in here, my y axis is the ek. In other words, this is the responding variable. The manipulated variable, or the x-axis, is mass. So ek is the y-axis, and my responding variable is mass. Sorry, my manipulated variable is mass. My manipulated x-axis is mass. My responding y-axis is ek. And so that means that the m, the slope, if you like, let's just split this up even more, the slope must mean something, okay? This is the slope. So let's rewrite this out. Let's say 
let's say ek is equal to the slope, which is the m, times, let's put this in brackets, times the mass. Okay, so how does that match with our known physics principles? So over here, we know that ek is equal to one half mv squared. And let's isolate this mass over here. And then everything else that's in the bracket has to be what's left. So one half v squared. Okay, so hopefully you can see that this slope must be the half v squared. Okay, this is a crucial, crucial skill. So I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to restate it. I'm going to say, therefore, slope from, the, from, the, from my data, from my graph, is equal to one half v squared. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the speed. So I can say that two times my slope square rooted is v. Okay, and so I'm going to get this. I'm going to get an answer here. My v is going to be square root of two times my slope. Well, my slope is eighteen decimal. Five, eight, lots of decimal places that I'm going to keep in my calculator. I'm going to keep these units in here. I'll take a look at those in a minute. And that means I get a value, if I put this into my calculator, I get a value of 6. What have I done there? Let's go back. Of 6 decimal 0, 8, 5, 8, so on. And at the moment, let's take a look, I've still got it in joules per kilogram, so which doesn't really make sense because I'm supposed to be in meters per second. But hey, wait a second. A joule, a joule is, while well, MGH, so a joule is kilograms, and gravity is meters per second squared, and height would be also meters, so that's meters squared, divided by kilograms. And hey, look what happens. This cancels. The square cancels and you're left with, you got it, you're left with meters per second. And so that's very nice indeed. There's our meters per second. So 6.0858 something, something, something meters per second. One last thing to mention is significant digits. Now, we, we don't really have any significant digits here because we're using a graph. We are not using any... Uh, actual measured values here. So in, re in real life, we would have to look back at our experiment and figure out what it was that we were using. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume here that we're in, um, let's just say, th three decimal, uh, three significant digits here. So I'll, I'll just rewrite this out as 6.09 meters per second.